Now, what's all that noise about? Oh, I'm trying to drum up sponsors to sponsor me in the bat marathon flight. The money we raise helps underprivileged bats all over the world. Well, I've never heard of a marathon flight before. You see, the word marathon came from ancient Greece and referred to running, not flying. Oh, Webster, we're not living in ancient Greece anymore. I was uh, merely trying to add to your education. Yes. <laughs> what do you say? Will you sign my list, Oh, Webster? stop that noise. I'll sign. Good. I'll sign. Because <laughs> I'm nuts about flying. Say he was just plain nuts. Oh, I don't see why everyone makes such a big fuss about flying a plane, having to get a pilot's license and going to training school and stuff. There's a lot to learn about flying. Ah, oh, come on. Flying's a cinch. You think everything's a cinch, Joe. Yeah, I tell you, anyone with half a brain can fly a plane. Okay, if you're so smart, let's go and see if you can fly a plane. Sure thing. You'll see. Come on. The next day, we went to the airport and rented a plane. We climbed in and fastened our seat belts. Joe stared blankly at the instrument panel. I think you have to start the engine, Joe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is Piper 4-2 Whiskey to control. Requesting permission to taxi. Control to Piper 4 to Whiskey. Permission to taxi denied. Ah, who cares about them, Kevin? Here we go. We're on the runway now. Piper 4 to Whiskey to control. Requesting permission to take off. Control to Piper 4 to Whiskey. Permission to take off denied. Repeat denied. Ah. Uh, that, that doesn't mean a thing. That's just a formality. Here we go. Hey. Look out! There's a 747 right ahead! Oh! 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 oh. 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 We just made it. Oh. Oh. Do you realize you could have killed all those innocent people? Yeah. I would have missed it. Good grief. What's that in 511? It, it looks like a UFO. Hello? Uh, this is Control to our Armed Forces Base. UFO spotted in the vicinity of 711. Investigate immediately. It's just as well that radar operator made a mistake or those T-33s they sent up could have shot us down. Hey, what's wrong? We're losing height. Rota control, Kevin. The air vents are blocked. I'll put the flaps down and hope we level out. We're leveling. I'll see if I can land this thing. Uh, 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 yeah. Whew. Congratulations. A three-point landing in a field of manure. Oh, shut up and let's get out of here. Ugh. As soon as we stepped out, a bull charged at us and sent Joe flying in the air. We landed head first in a pile of manure. Congratulations, Joe. Your first successful takeoff and landing. Joe just looked at me, his face covered with modesty and manure, and he never bragged again. <laughs> What would you do if you can fly? Well, I don't really know about that. Well, I'd like it a lot. Well, I'd probably fly around the world first and then around to Barbados about every day. I wouldn't like to fly. Well, I'd go to the moon. <laughs> Flat my wings. 
fly to the sun. I'd fly away from school. And I do, I just dive down into my mom's home and give her a real good scare. I get air sick very easy. Fly in the United States and see my uncle. And, well, if I could fly, that'd be pretty good. <laughs> Take a trip around the world. Oh, if I had wings, man. <laughs> that'd be neat. Well, it'd save me time going on the bike to the store. <laughs> Relax and go to school. <laughs> just fly around. I suppose flying is fun, but I'm better at running. It all started in Halifax, Nova Scotia in 1963. Glenda Austin had just got to the railroad station when she stopped. In front of her was a huge box covered with different designs and colors. She opened the box and took out another exactly the same. Now this was really odd. Then she took out another. And inside this box was a pair of sneakers. She was rather disappointed, but she took off her shoes and put on the sneakers. Then, suddenly, the sneakers made Glenda run all over the railroad. All of a sudden, she found herself in a big field. How on earth did I get here? And I can't seem to stop moving with these sneakers on. Linda, dear. Give me those sneakers. Well, who are you? I'm Mary the Magician. You know that. Why do you want these sneakers? Silly girl. Stop asking questions and give me those sneakers! Who has to catch me first? Give me those sneakers! Then Glenda found herself back at the station. She was glad to be free from Mary the Magician and quickly took off the sneakers, put them back in the box, and went home. How much is it going to cost me? Well, it depends on how many cents per kilometer you decide on. How many kilometers are you flying? Well, a couple of hundred. Oh, uh, it'll cost me a fortune. Now, if I agree to a quarter of a cent a kilometer, that'll be... Uh, oh, come on, Stubby. Let's say a cent a kilometer. Oh, it makes a math three. that much easier. Oh, well, okay, I'll sign. Now, when is this marathon? Next Friday night. Red night. How do you see where you're going? Oh, didn't you know bats always fly by night and we use sonar? What sonar? Well, he's not too bright, is he? Uh, sonar is where we make sounds as we fly, and the way the sounds bounce off things helps us from bumping into them. Seems to me like a pretty silly way of getting around, but then you never know. Sometimes the most unlikely characters succeed. <laughs> In the town of Oakville lived a sheriff called Sam. Now, although Sam always wore blue jeans and a blue top, he always wore his star to show that he was a sheriff. But the people of the town used to laugh at Sam behind his back because he always messed things up. One day, the Wright brothers rode into town. Some people saw them coming and said, I wonder what the wrong brothers are up to this time. The brothers took two saddles for their horses, then stole four guns right from the sheriff's office, which made Sam furious. Come back here, he yelled. He was very excited because this would be the first time anyone would go in his jail. That is, if he caught them. So he went to jump on his horse, but sailed clear over it and right off the other side into a pool of mud. 
and the people watching laughed and laughed. Sam brushed himself down and yelled back, I'll get them if it takes me a year. One old timer said, don't bother Sam, it'll take you the rest of your life to catch them. Finally, Sam got on his horse and rode off after the Wright brothers. The brothers had already stopped because they thought Sam could never catch them. But suddenly he appeared around the bend riding hard. The brothers leaped on their horses and the chase was on. Suddenly their horses saw a field mouse and stopped dead. And the two brothers took a trip over their horses' heads. Sam rushed over and found his four guns and the two saddles and told the Wright brothers, You're going right to jail! And that's where they still are. And Sam is still proud of himself for what he finally managed to do. It's snowing! I'll soon be able to go tobogganing! No, you won't. Remember the dragon. Oh, yes. It's not fair the way he melts all the snow with his fiery breath. I'm going to try to get rid of that dragon for you. <laughs> Look. To the man who kills the dragon. Two thousand gold shillings and my daughter in marriage. <laughs> well, Blue Knight. I'm going to kill the dragon on the first try, sire. Now, how do I get there? You turn left, then you come to a red gate, you go through it, then you'll come to a cave. Did you get that? No, not all of it. What part didn't you get? The part after it turned left. Now, listen carefully. Oh, go ahead and, and, and go. <laughs> Wait until I tell the king about you. <laughs> Look what he did to my shining sword. I'm leaving. Uh, where are you going, Black Knight? I uh, think I left my tap running in the bathtub. <laughs> I see. Oh, oh, dear, 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 dear. Oh, there's the White Knight. Well, off you go, White Knight. And get that dragon! Yes, Your Majesty. Come out and fight like a dragon! Oh, 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 my mother will kill me when she sees the mess I'm in. I'm Fireman Joe, and I'm going to catch the dragon. It seems that that's impossible. No, it isn't. Well, at least you need armor. No, all I need is my fire hose. Come out, please, and open your mouth. Here, take that. Oh, 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 fantastic. Hey, you put out my fire. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> will you come back to the king with oh, me? Sure, I will. Sure, sure. You did it, Fireman Joe. And so Joe and the princess lived happily ever after. Bolo would stop hot dogging around. It makes me nervous. He's just getting into shape for the marathon. Ah, I think getting into shape is just a stupid waste of time. Oh, never mind. He likes it. Have some maple toffee, Clara. It may sweeten you a little. Oh, I love toffee. But where did you find the maple syrup for? On the shelf over there. What? That's not maple syrup, you dummy. That 
glue. Oh, no. How silly of me. Yeah. Oh. Oh. oh, toffee. Mm. No. Uh, oh. No, Bolo. No, Bolo. Don't touch it. Teach him. Oh no, the glue must have stuck his mouth shut and upset his sonar. That should keep him quiet for a while. <laughs> but he won't be able to enter the marathon. <laughs> so much for the evil Knievel of the bat world. Oh. Ketch was a boy of 14, the only child of Mr. and Mrs. Seaweed. The only ambition that Ketch had was to be a motorcycle driver. But living in a bush area that seemed cut off from everywhere left the boy little hope of ever becoming a second evil Knievel. Ketch's father, a wealthy lumberjack, frowned upon his son's dream. Ketch's mother, a happy housewife, wanted him to be a lumberjack. But Ketch didn't fancy the log business. The next day, Mr. Plum, a big shot from town, came out to look at some lumber. Ketch knew that Mr. Plum was building a new motorcycle track, so kept flinging questions at Mr. Plum about the track. Eventually, when Mr. Plum had bought the lumber, he invited Ketch down to the track for the opening trial races. But first, Ketch had to get his father's permission to go. Finally, Mr. Seaweed said he might as well go as he didn't want to work in the bush. When Ketch got to the track with Mr. Plum, he was shaking with excitement. Mr. Plum gave Ketch a motorcycle and a week to practice for his first race. Ketch had never worked so hard and never loved anything so much. The day of the race came and his father and mother came to see it. Ketch was so excited. Then the flag went up. Ketch roared off. The others were soon left in the dust. They were no competition for Ketch. He led all the way and won. His parents were so proud. After the race, Ketch signed a lifelong contract with Mr. Plum. Then his father apologized for his misjudgment of his son's ambition, and Ketch was number one hero in his parents' eyes. Maybe he would become a second evil Knievel. If you are a boy or girl who likes to write stories about monsters, robots, detectives, animals, witches, computers, plants, cowboys, kings, ships, feet, spacemen, insects, football, weirdos, or anything you can think of, then here's what you can do. Send your story, long or short, in a stamped envelope addressed to Pencil Box, CBC TV, Post Office Box 3220, Station C. That's Box 3220, Station C, Ottawa, Ontario. And, oh yes, don't forget to include your own name, age, and address. Your story may be chosen to be adapted for television. So remember, there's a story in your pencil. See it in action on Pencil Box. There was once a dog called Sam, and he was a pest because he howled and he'd help other dogs get off their chains and the owner would yell you dumb dog don't you have a home but sam had no home because no one liked him poor sam all alone one day, when Sam was walking in the park, he saw a girl dog whose name was Bonnie. Bonnie was the prettiest dog he'd ever seen. But Bonnie just walked by Sam. Sam's heart was broken. came 
come by. Oh, you poor dog. You have no home. You can come home with me. Good grief, give that dog a bath. Sam didn't know this, but Barney lived there. When Sam had his bath and was dry, he saw Barney. And now, Barney and Sam have puppies of their own. This is dreadful, and it's all my fault. Uh, don't get angry, Bolo. It was an accident. We'll soon get you back to your normal, unglued self. Oh, don't laugh at him, Webster. We've got to do something. Uh, sorry, old chap, but don't be too disappointed. There'll be another marathon. Oh, please, Bolo, don't cry. Please, Bolo, you're making my pages soggy. It was the day of the rocket launching. As an FBI agent, it was my job to see everything went smoothly. Then a stranger entered the station. It was exactly 1.05 p.m. The moment I saw him, I instantly distrusted him. I watched him through the corner of my eye. You were out here. Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, I am. Uh, I am an inspector. I just sit here watching, uh, making sure everything is okay. That's a nice, easy job. Yes. Will Mr. John Harriet please come to the launching pad? That's me. Hello. Come in. Come in. Seems like he's talking, but there's no one around. talking into a fountain pen. Of course, it must be a radio transmitter. Uh, yes, yes, any minute now I, I should be moving in for the kill. Yes, I go. Mr. X, he got me. Third floor. Mr. X, the stranger. And the third floor is where the other astronauts meet for their final briefing. I'll use the stairs. Guard, call the police and an ambulance. Emergency. FBI, the game's up. You gotta come quietly. Ah, ah. Okay, Flaherty, take him away. The rest was simple. At police headquarters, Mr. X admitted that he was a member of a ring of spies. His mission, to kill all three astronauts on the team. Fortunately, astronaut Davis survived and I was able to put paid to Operation X. Shh. I've got a plan to get Bolo unstuck. Don't tell him. Here he comes. Oh, 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 oh I surrender, don't you? Oh, it worked. Me. It worked. You came unglued. Hey, I can talk. Mm -hmm. That means I can fly again. You can enter the marathon after all. Yay! Oh, see you soon. Bye. Once upon a time, there lived a foot. It was a quirk of nature, as it was six feet tall and four and a half feet wide. Everybody feared this foot because it stunk and was horrible looking. 
<laughs> I wish people wouldn't run away from me. I'd really like to have a human friend. You see, feet are like pets. If they don't have a friend, they may get a broken heart. <sighs> Hi, human. Hi, foot. Say, you're a nice foot. Oh, <laughs> you really think so? No one's ever said anything like that to me. You seem rather lonely. Yes, I am very lonely. Do you want to be friends? Oh, yes. I've never had a friend before. How would you like another friend, too? Oh, well, Rapture Fantastic. You stay here. I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> A six foot foot. Uh, Mr. Uh, foot. Oh, I'd like you to meet Miss Worm. Oh, yeah. hello, Miss Worm. Hello, Mr. Foot. Uh, where did you find such a beautiful worm? Uh -huh. I'm Belter. She's six feet tall and four and a half feet wide, just like you. Oh, uh, m m m Miss Worm, do you like dancing? I love dancing! Oh. <laughs> Eventually, Miss Worm and Mr. Foot got married and lived happily ever after. And so did the human. Have you heard anything from Bull, Stubby? Not yet. Oh, but he should be back by now. Maybe he bumped into something, using sonar as such a weird way to fly. Oh, any news, Webster? Well, the marathon's over, but I haven't seen Bolo. Oh, what if he crashed? <laughs> oh, I made it, I oh, made it. Wonderful. Oh. How far did you go? All the way, 341 kilometers. Oh, my gosh. If only I'd sponsored half a set of kilometer. Well done, Bolo, old pal. Congratulations. Sit down, Bolo. Sit down. You look, you look all in. Yes, you relax. An old stubby here can make a few calculations to see how much we owe you. Let's see. Uh, 341 kilometers at once and a kilometer is, uh, let me see, 341 cents, which is... Oh, come on, stubby. $3.41. And don't be such a penny pincher. I sponsor two cents a kilometer, so I owe $6.82. Hey, hey, Bolo, you really made some money, you know. Bolo! 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 <laughs>